My name's Daniel Roy, and today I'm going to demonstrate 10 levels of sleight of hand. To start off, we'll use a card at random from the deck. So let's use whatever uh, this card happens to be here. Okay, the Ace of Clubs. Now I'll put the Ace of Clubs on top of the deck. Level one is to control one card. So if I give these cards a cut like this, you can see that I've managed to control that Ace of Clubs. Now level two is what's called a slug control, which just means to control a small group of cards. So I'll give these cards a shuffle and some cuts. And not only have I managed to control that Ace of Clubs, but also the two of clubs, the three of clubs, the four of clubs, and the five of clubs. Now level three is controlling the entire deck. So I'm gonna give these cards a series of uh, shuffles and cuts. And it's always a good idea to shuffle multiple times and give the cards uh, many cuts as well. And any good shuffle sequence should end with a one-handed cut like this. Not only have I controlled the Ace of Clubs, the Two of Clubs, the Three of Clubs, the Four of Clubs, and the Five of Clubs, I've also controlled the Six, the Seven, the Eight, the Nine, the Ten, the Jack, the Queen, and the King. But it's not just the clubs, it's every card in the deck. That's the Ace to King of Hearts, the Ace to King of Diamonds, and the Ace to King of Spades. Every single card in perfect numerical order. If you want to see me perform live in New York City, you can get tickets to my show on my website. And if you want to learn magic, check out my online course, Card Magic 101. Links are in the description. Now for level four, we're going to talk about a different kind of shuffle. It's called a pharaoh shuffle. Now, not like the Egyptian pharaohs, it's spelled F-A-R-O, and it comes from an old gambling game. The pharaoh shuffle is a perfect interlace of the cards. So if I spread them out, you'll see what I mean. They run one card from this side, one card from this side, one from this side, one from this side, all the way through the deck. Now the pharaoh shuffle can be done in the hands, the way you saw me do it just a moment ago, but it can also be done flat on the table in a way that mimics a uh, casino style riffle shuffle, but it's just the same thing, a perfect interlace from the top to the bottom. Now, although it's a real shuffle, the pharaoh shuffle is a controlled shuffle. I've managed to control all four aces up to the top of the deck. Now, so far, we've been talking about how to control the cut and how to control various types of uh, shuffles. But now we're going to turn our attention to a different category of techniques called crooked deals. So level five is the second deal. I will put the uh, ace of spades on top of the deck. I'm gonna deal out a round of cards, yet somehow I've received the ace of spades. Now, it's very easy to see what's happening if I leave an ace face up on top of the deck. When I deal to the other players, you can see that I'm actually pulling cards from directly underneath the ace. In other words, I'm dealing the second card from the top. Now, level six is called the bottom deal. The ace of hearts goes onto the bottom of the deck here, and I'm gonna deal one card to each of the other players and then one card to myself off the bottom. You can see the ace of hearts is no longer on the bottom of the deck because it's now in my poker hand. Now, level seven is what's called a Greek deal. See, in high stakes games of cards, they make you use a cut card, which is basically just a face up joker or a plastic card that goes onto the bottom of the deck and it pins in the ace of clubs. Because right now, if I tried to do a bottom deal, I would deal the face up joker, which would make it super obvious that I was cheating. Yet it's even possible to deal that ace of clubs out from above the cut card. You can see the joker is still there, but the ace of clubs is gone because it's now in my poker hand. Level eight is the grandfather of all the crooked dealing moves, the legendary center deal. I'm going to take those four aces and I will put them into the uh, middle of the deck. And it's very important that you see they really are in the middle of the deck. And now the goal here is to deal those aces out from the center. So I'm gonna deal out a five-handed game and each time I get to my hand, I don't take the top card. Instead, I reach into the middle and pull out an ace. And that should be all four aces. Now for level nine, we're gonna come back to crooked shuffles, but we'll be talking about a different kind of crooked shuffle. Rather than a false shuffle, we're gonna talk about stacking the deck. So, I will put the four aces on top, but I'm gonna leave them face up so you can follow them. I'm gonna give these cards a riffle shuffle like so, and I'll spread the cards out so you can see what happened. 
The shuffle down here is a real shuffle, but up at the top, I put exactly one, two, three, four cards between the Ace of Spades and the Ace of Diamonds. And I'm now going to repeat this uh, process again. So I'm going to give these cards another riffle shuffle, this time putting uh, exactly one, two, three, four cards in between the Ace of Diamonds and the Ace of uh, Hearts here. Now this gets more and more difficult each time because on this third shuffle, not only do I have to put four cards in between that top pair of aces here, that's one, two, three, four, but I have to make sure I don't accidentally shuffle any cards into the stack here, otherwise that would ruin all the work that I've put in so far. Now all that's left is just to shuffle uh, four cards on top of everything else, and after you shuffle, you always have to cut. Now let's see if the stack worked. I stacked for a five-handed game, so on this first round, you'll see that I receive an ace. This hand here is called uh, Pocket Aces. They say that three of a kind is really all you'd ever need to get the money, but just to be sure, I stacked myself all four aces. Now, the beauty of riffle stacking, relative to the other techniques that we've been talking about so far, is that it lets you control other players' cards, right? They're not gonna bet any money if I don't deal them good hands. See, I stacked this player here, the Ten of Clubs, the Ten of Hearts, the Ten of Diamonds, and the Ten of Spades. This player here got the Jack of Clubs, the Jack of Hearts, the Jack of Diamonds, and the Jack of Spades. This player here received all four queens, and this player over here received all four kings. Now, for level 10, I'm not going to introduce any new techniques. Instead, I'm going to combine all of the techniques that we've discussed so far from levels 1 to 9. So I'm going to put those uh, four aces back towards the middle of the deck. We'll start off with one of those uh, perfect interlace pharaoh shuffles that we were talking about earlier. Then we will move on to some of those uh, false shuffles and cuts. And last but not least, we will finish with uh, one of those uh, stacking shuffles from before. And now by combining all of those with some crooked deals, I should be able to deal myself the best possible bridge hand, starting with the Ace of Spades, followed by the Two of Spades, and the Three of Spades, and the Four of Spades, and the Five, and the Six, and the Seven, and the Eight, and the Nine, and the Ten, and the Jack, and the queen and the king of spades, but I would be a poor cheat if I didn't stack some good cards for my friends here. That's why I gave this player the king of diamonds, the queen of diamonds, the jack of diamonds, the ten of diamonds, the nine, the eight, the seven, the six, the five, the four, the three, the two, and the ace of uh, diamonds. I gave this player over here all 13 clubs in perfect numerical order, and for my partner, the second highest ranking suit in bridge, the ace to king of hearts. And that is 10 levels of sleight of hand. This video is an upgraded rendition, a version two of the video that started it all, 10 levels of sleight of hand, which I published on July 30th of 2020, kickstarted my YouTube channel and also my magic career. So if you watched that video, liked it, commented, subscribed, uh, thank you very much. I'm indebted to you and I'm really grateful for everything that's come my way as a result of that video. So I figured that on the two year anniversary of that video, that's today, I would upload a second version. Now I wanted to tinker with the routine and improve a few small bits, but mainly with that first video, I shot it with multiple cameras angles. And the reason I did that is I wanted to be able to highlight the most important part of the action so the viewer could appreciate the sleight of hand going on. However, some people in the comments were suspicious. They thought that I was using those multiple camera angles to hide some secret editing or rearrange the cards as I switched between them. And of course, that's not the case. It was all one continuous take, and it was all accomplished through sleight of hand. However, for this second version, I figured I would shoot it from just one camera angle to prove that it's all one continuous take and that all the magic is in the sleight of hand and not in the video editing. Funny story, I actually almost didn't post the original 10 levels of sleight of hand video. I remember sitting at my desk going back and forth in my head. Do I post it? Do I delete it? Do I post it? Do I delete it? I just felt like it was a bit dry and uninspired and that people wouldn't like it. But the reception to the video certainly proved me wrong. Boy, oh boy, am I glad that I posted it. So glad, in fact, that I made the same video a second time around. And with that said, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you like this video, please give it a like. And if you want to see more, consider subscribing to the channel and following me on social media. If you want to see me perform live in New York City, you can get tickets to my show on my website. You can also contact me there about private bookings. And if you want to learn magic, check out my online course, Card Magic 101. Links are in the description. See you next time.